Hi there, welcome back to the new video. Today in this video, we'll be looking into designing ML systems and discuss a blueprint that talks about starting from when you think about solving any problem to finally delivering it. We'll look into all these aspects block by block and try to stitch them in a thought flow. But again, feel free to add or subtract any blocks that you see depending on how you or your organization practices it. So let's move into it. So the first stage is the problem understanding stage. Where again, you should be able to answer these questions. The first one is what are we trying to solve? The second is who are we trying to solve this for? Or who is the end consumers or who is the end audience hoping to use it eventually? Then you talk about how, which is how are people going to use it? What's their experience going to look like? And finally, by when are we expecting to get this done? Are there any strict deadlines? Are there any timelines that we have to meet? Because this will eventually decide on the kind of choices that we make going forward in this journey in terms of model iteration and experiments that we do. So once you're clear on all these aspects, which is the first stage, we move on to the second one, which is identifying the metrics. So there's a popular saying that says, if you can't measure something, you cannot improve it. So before even you start off with a journey of doing model iterations and data preparation and all of that stuff, you should be knowing how you're going to measure. Supposedly, you have built what you wanted. Now, again, depending on the problem, you have a lot of metrics that you can talk about, depending on the situation, such as if you have labeled data with you, then how you're going to evaluate it. If not, then what's your strategy for creating the labeled data so that you can evaluate your model that you create. So depending on those scenarios, you'll have to figure out the metric. But there has to be two things that you need to keep in your mind. One is doing an offline evaluation, which you will by default do because you're building your model. The second one is doing an online evaluation. So now offline evaluation is something that is a proxy to the actual thing that your organization cares or wants to optimize for. Example of which is, let's say, increasing the F score or recall or precision, accuracy, AUC, all of that stuff is an offline score that is a feedback for you or your system to do continuous iteration and have better versions of it once you're satisfied on and hold out validation cross validation whatever set you have created and once it goes live with the real audience then the concept of online evaluation or online metric kicks in where an example of it could be let's say if you are building a search ranking system wherein the idea is pretty simple user will type a certain query you will give out let's say list of n elements sorted at relevance or some amalgamation of a score that you've created and how many times people click and then add it to the cart so that could be one of the online metrics that you would want to track right when the user journey looks like he types in something then clicks and then adds to cart if this happens that's a positive signal in terms of what you recommended is correct so what was the percentage that was happening initially with the deployed system versus with your system has this percentage gone up or not so that's the business metric or the online metric that company would really care about based on the patterns that you see here you'll have to go back and maybe change your offline metric or make it even stricter in terms of pushing the next version for doing the online evaluation so that's the idea about offline and online evaluation okay so in between you can have one more step over here wherein you try to get an understanding of the scale and latency of the system that you're going to build eventually as in at what scale are we talking about for the solution how fast are we expecting for every user to get the output because knowing this also will give you a hint in terms of if you want to go about doing a complex deep learning based solution or the ask is to okay i don't want a 99 percent accuracy maybe 96 is okay but it has to be really fast enough in terms of how it processes the user query. So you want to maybe go a little distilled version of your initial thought. So all these parameters, if you know ahead of time, it will get a little easy in terms of planning out the things going forward. Okay, so the first one was problem. The second one was understanding of latency and scalability or scale. The third is knowing your metric before you start developing a solution. Moving on to the third one, which is having a brainstorming session. When you want to chart out some of the working components that you think are necessary to get to the final solution, what does the pipeline flow looks like? Which means how are the components stitching up? Pipeline, yeah, how are the components stitching up? You want to know the ingestion source of your data, like how are you going to get 
all of the data where are going to sync it do we need to put it in a certain database that can that will be used by any other application or not and when all of this is done what should be your serving strategy how are you going to serve your entire system is it an on device application that should be running or is it an api that you should be hosting and this is usually recommended to be done in a larger setting where you have multiple people talking about this problem statement and you have business people also in loop for this conversation so that they can also look into the thought process of how you're thinking and maybe give out their valuable inputs in terms of you understanding your requirement even better and nudging your thought process accordingly. So once this is done, you move to the fifth stage, which is data preparation or let's say training data generation. By the way, you can also have a few things known prior at the part of step two, which is knowing if the data has a certain shift. Is there a sort of seasonality or trends that will change over time? Because then you'll have to have a system that detects drift and eventually has a retraining module in place, which people call as continuous ML. Okay, so talking about the training data generation, you have a lot of strategies that you can explore. The first one being doing a manual labeling where you hire a group of SMEs or maybe who understands domain a little better and use their expertise in terms of getting this data labeled. The second one is doing it little smartly and creating first set of data using the existing system that's deployed in. So there might be two possibilities, which is like the system that you're bringing onto the table is the first one till date and there's no possibility of getting an historical data based on some model that was deployed. The second is you already had a model deployed, which might not be performing as expected now, but it's still good enough to get some weekly label or little better than weekly label data to start your journey. And that initial system could have been ML based or just rule based or something, right? So that way you can use existing system to derive a certain pattern in terms of how you want to fetch data. Which again, for example, in the case of search ranking would be, if I show you X amount of things for a given query, whatever you click is a positive sample for that query. So that's a positive sample and the rest of the samples that I have are basically the negative ones. So that way I have some sort of triplet data that's getting generated already and I use that for my purposes. Okay, so the next strategy for data generation could be incorporating an active learning loop into your labeling exercise. Now where the idea is you get some handful number of labels tagged using manual labeling and then train a simple model on that and use active learning to devise what next label where the model is not confident enough should be tagged. And those are the specific examples that, that the SMEs go through. So that way you're optimizing on their time and cost. And the entire cycle of getting more and more data gets efficient. The fourth could be doing data augmentation, which is again, you get manually labeled and then you augment it to generate some synthetic samples. And once you have your data generated, you move on to the next step, which is features. Now here again, with deep learning systems, you need to evaluate maybe multiple embeddings that work for your use case. The second is like you can always go about handcrafting certain features. And the idea is that like these will most likely not harm your system and should always improve the performance of your system compared to when using just the auto learned feature that the deep learning systems do. And using a combination of both of them is the best ensemble that you can do. So the third one is like you need to figure out if there is a possibility of few categories, so maybe some set of business rules in case they're available, you should be incorporating it in the pipeline that you eventually create. And finally, we move on to the interesting part of ML model iterations, where now you are like a free bird and you explore all sort of models that are available for this task, along with the features, the data that you have created, and so on. So these are pretty much the high level stuff that you should be following. And as I said, there might be a lot of things that you can think of that should go in between this, maybe over here. But again, as I said, this is just a blueprint that you need to keep in your mind. Feel free to add and subtract on a few things that you or your organization do as a part of best practices. And do let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to incorporate those additions or deletions in my understanding as well. 
Okay, and beyond these four, five, six, and seven, beyond these seven steps, then comes the cycle of packaging and serving these systems, which I'll not go in this video. I'll probably make a next video on that, but yeah. So feel free to let me know what you think about this and feel free to share it across with your friends to who you think might be interested in such content. In the meantime, like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.